All right, back here on Inside Wrestling Radio, up to the interview portion of the program. And as um, as I've been saying, I've been kind of bouncing around all over the studio today, waiting for Melissa to get here. And uh, we just tickled oh, that to death. Sounds terrible. <laughs> we just tickled to death that you're here, and uh, and and glad I got you. You know, right here in, in the seat, in the power seat in the house, right here next to me. So uh, <laughs> you just buried me for getting here. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. We're, no, we were, we were, we were. I, I didn't even. I, I I was a little mistaken about the timing. Right. Hey, no. Nope, <laughs> but I, I have the worst cold ever right now. That's why my throat's so hoarse right now. So just anyone who's listening, I don't normally sound like this, but I'm so congested, it's ridiculous. Right. Just just bear with us here. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. This could be an interesting interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen again. We appreciate you coming, in. and let's talk a little bit about your before you got into wrestling, and uh, and and you, what you were doing previous to wrestling. Tell us a little about way before that. What, what was you? What was you? Were you always in the sports? Is that was that your deal? I did, yeah, I was always I was always kind of a tomboyish little girl, <laughs> which my parents didn't like that much, but. <laughs> Whatever, you know, right. everyone, you, you know, no point in squashing athletic little girl's dreams, you sure. know what I mean? So sure. I actually wanted to play football when I was young, which was funny, but my mom, like, my dad just would not condone it. There was no way they were going to take me to play football, which is funny what I'm about to be <laughs> and taking shortly, which we'll get into later. Right. But, um, no, I, I played a lot of sports. Uh, the main thing I'm, I did really well at and am and, and still really well known at um, is uh, for bodybuilding. Right. I, uh... I got into bodybuilding, and I, I was ninth in the world at one point. I did the Olympia a couple of times. I, I did tons of fitness modeling. Um, but I actually got into the bodybuilding from me pursuing tennis. Okay. So kind of I'd done a lot of different things kind of all over the place. Like I, I played tennis. I was lifting weights so I'd be powerful for tennis. That turned into me being a bench press champion, which yeah. you know eventually turned into me getting into <coughs> bodybuilding. So the bodybuilding, you start inc- you know incorporating a very strict diet. And that kind of, that's what separates like the bodybuilders from the weightlifters is mm-hmm. the diet because a lot of people cannot do the diet. Sure. I, I, I was always good at it though. I have very thin skin. So I would get lean easily and all my muscles would show up and mm-hmm. my skin was nice and supple and soft and that sort of thing. And I'm <laughs> Sure, I'm not going to test that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What a, what a, what a, but, uh, you know, so it just, uh, right. yeah, so I went through a bodybuilding career and, and um, I was very successful at that. Did tons of fitness modeling as well. I was one of the, the, the girls who was big enough to be a champion bodybuilder, Yeah. Um, but also still girly and attainable enough looking sure you know for the average public that I, I did a lot of covers and posters and swimsuit videos and calendars and stuff like that I, I was really you know I had a really great career within fitness and um, right. bodybuilding and I still do fitness modeling I'm still very close to Bob Kennedy who owns the muscle make you know which of course you know he introduced uh, Tristratus right yes. and a lot of Tori Wilson a lot of Tori Wilson was in his magazine a lot as well I'm still very close with Bob and right. we plan on doing some more work together are you, are you you're not competing at all now that, with bodybuilding not right now because it's honestly it's too diff- it's too hard on your body to sure. do that kind of dieting and still have the kind of agility and movement to to wrestle right um, it's just depletes your body too much sure absolutely so and and so you went straight out of bodybuilding into wrestling, or was there something else in between? How, how no, I, I went from bodybuilding to wrestling. It was a process, though, because, um, you know, I had to... It was just an entirely different movement. Like, bodybuilding is all display beauty muscle, you know? It's yeah. like artwork sort of thing. Sure. And then, you know, it's not about moving a certain way or... or or, uh, you know, picking people up. You're picking weights up and everything's like a linear movement. Sure. You know, when you're wrestling, it's just so much more functional. So, you know, it was a process getting used to, to putting my body through that type of uh, training. But the, you're talking about the difference between the bodybuilding and the, and the wrestling deal? The wrestling, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I went into the wrestling from the bodybuilding, but, it, you know, it, was a, it, it took a little while just to... Um, Get your mind into the different kind of training. The, the, the body, really. Sure. I, I mean, it's yeah, it's difficult. It's an entirely different way of thinking as well, but, right. I mean, it's uh, it was just getting the body used to it. A lot of bodybuilders have tried to do pro wrestling. Yes. A lot of them have, and they, they haven't been able to uh, stick with it. Sure. Now, you... How did you make the train? Hey, were you ever a fan of wrestling, or, or was it something... Yeah, I was a just fan said- of wrestling. I, I've always been a fan of, you know, women's you know, sports, right. for one thing. Um, I, I don't remember particularly knowing, I uh, check Medusa, you know, um, yeah. names particularly, because my, my parents were very, like, into school, so I mm-hmm. studied a lot. So I would flip channels and kind of see stuff and think it was cool, but it was nothing I could really 
focus on because basically it was impossible. They wouldn't really let me. <laughs> um, but I was really into that whole whole Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Ms. Elizabeth sure. saga, you know, because, right. of course, I'm a girl, too, and I thought it was, like, so <laughs> sweet and stuff like that. But, you know, and Hogan looked great, you know, the whole blonde muscle Venice Beach sort of stuff. And I probably also, like, you know, because it was a little more acceptable, I guess, for me to do bodybuilding in my family than it was for, for a girl to be doing wrestling. I think, sure. I think that kind of also fed into my bodybuilding Right. So, <laughs> you, who did you train with? Who who actually got you in to say, okay, now you're going to go from this world into this world? You know, did, I kind did of, you seek somebody out, or did they come and get you? Basically, is what I'm asking. Well, UPW was interested in me, um, but I just I was heavily involved with bodybuilding. I just done a major contest. I just did the Miss International, mm-hmm. and I was in the middle of my photo shoot. So, I didn't really think to you know I guess I couldn't really pay that much attention to it because I was in the middle of doing what I was doing at the time to make money sure um, but I kind of see you know I seeked out some stuff as well I ended up going up to um, Killer Kowalski's in Malden so I started there mm-hmm. and uh, I did actually have a conversation with Kevin Kelly um, way back when when he was still working for the company and at the time he suggested you know, Louisville, but, you know, I'm Canadian. I knew nothing about Kentucky. So, of <laughs> course, like, you know, we're, we're, I'm focusing on California, New York, and Florida, you sure. know. So when he was telling me to go there, I guess it was already a developmental, but yeah. I really didn't know, and nobody nobody really guided me or told me. I think most people, because of how well I was doing in bodybuilding, mm-hmm. I don't think any, it's like nobody helped me get into wrestling because I don't think they wanted me to leave bodybuilding. So it was really, right. it was really a self-motivated thing, you know, and, you know, in hindsight, I would have managed it completely differently. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just the way it worked for me, you know. So what do you mean? What do you mean you would have handled it differently if it were your well, own? Well, I, the way I, 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 I am, I'm like, <laughs> uh, I'm kind of like way too modest. <laughs> and at the time, what I should have done, because I was already ninth in the world and had tons of magazines. At the time yeah. when I got into the wrestling business, you know, I'm thinking in my head, well, I'm a famous bodybuilder, but, you know, I'm in all these magazines, but I don't know anything about wrestling, so I'll send myself to school and figure it out first. What I should have done is what, like, how a lot of the girls do is they say, hey, I'm so-and-so, like, here's my photos, here's all the stuff I've done, let's talk, are you guys interested, you know, contract, pay, you know, pay me Mm. to go uh, and train. Mm -hmm. And I didn't approach it that way because I didn't know any better at that time point in my life so you know i kind of i made things hard for myself sure but don't, do, do you feel like though that you garner more respect maybe from from the boys and girls as it were in the business because will, you went about it your own way in the long run but there's yeah. you know there's there's a lot of uh, jealousies and backstabbings sure. that go on in this business and some people just don't care one way or another that's true you know in the long that's run you point. know when i when i get where i want to go i mean it's going to be a good book it's going to be a good story it'll be you know a good story of perseverance for like, sure. people who who you know, take the long road, the long, hard road on stuff. But, yeah. you know, it, it's something that'll be great in the long run. But, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's you know, it's a little difficult to deal with just because, it you know, it, it's always a struggle getting through right. the independent scene. Sure, absolutely. And then, like you said, it is it is a tough because... It's very cutthroat. It, right, well, exactly, yeah. because it is, it is cutthroat. And, and I would imagine it's probably even more cutthroat in the female side of it. Yeah, it can be, yeah. 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 So, but, I mean, I, I'm a big believer in karma and stuff, and I just... You just let it roll kind of off your back? I, I just try to protect myself as best as I can and try to get to where I'm going. Sure. And we're going to talk about where you're going uh, when we come back from the break here. Uh, Melissa's got a lot of things coming up in her future. But I want to talk some when we come back from the break about your time in OVW and in Deep South and also your anarchy time when you worked with a friend of mine, Brody Chase, down there. And we'll talk about all that when we come back right here on Inside Wrestling Radio with Melissa Coates. <laughs> 